started reading Prepared, and then I kept thinking of new poems as I heard uh, Darling and Barry and Daphne. So, uh, the whole idea of response it, uh, rings true for me because oh, uh, it, that's a, a technique that I use when I get stuck. You know, find something that, that I want to respond to, um, either mimic it or you know, write about the opposite. So uh, I thought I would start with just a couple of poems from uh, my first book, Ask. Darlene mentioned there are some books available for sale back there, and, and Barry tells me that 15% of the sale price goes to the library, so in buying my book, you support your public library. <laughs> <laughs> um, Darlene introduced sex. <laughs> I'll blame it on Darlene. <laughs> so I couldn't resist the temptation to complete the circle here. Uh, this poem is titled, Someone Has To. <laughs> Always, after a night of sex, someone has to be the first to wake and yawn as morning squints in through the curtains. Someone has to notice it is early or late, has to scamper to the toilet, <clears throat> always white, always porcelain. Someone has to raise the window so the curtains billow in, and a breeze fills the absence in the room like birds assembling in the trees outside. Like their song when it is quiet, before the cars rush past. And someone has to listen just to keep from rolling over, falling back to sleep. There are bedclothes to be washed and towels, clean sheets taken from the bureau and unfurled. Someone has to do this, or else no one will. And these two, <laughs> lying on the bed asleep, already brief and delicate lines of life, may stay like this forever. <laughs> <laughs> Um, some of you know that I am now on Facebook. All right. <laughs> it took a lot of shaming, <laughs> a lot of pressure to get there, but I now have 40 friends. <laughs> and I haven't even logged on this afternoon, so. Uh, we'll see what kind of friends they are, though, when I ask them to come over and help me move a refrigerator. <laughs> I'm going to read a, a, a poem about a friend of mine from childhood named Artie. I loved Artie not for his remarkable lazy eye, his chipped front tooth or thick muddy hair, not for his rough and ready sisters, the tough talk they made their mouth that made their mouths so hard to imagine anyone kissing, <laughs> or his father whom we once watched hurl some door-to-door -door hustler off his porch and into a rose bush. <laughs> One angry fist on the man's coat collar, the other on his belt. <laughs> I did not love Artie for the footballs he routinely fumbled, or the grounders he let roll between his legs, his belly straining his white muscle shirt. <laughs> as he leapt or bent or flinched away out of fear. <laughs> I have forgotten when I first thought him beautiful. <clears throat> that lovely, lovely boy with one dull eye and one bad tooth and too many flaws for anyone to say he'd ever come to much beyond the boy he was back then. A whistler all day on Sandwith Avenue between sips of R.C. Cola and a verse or two of the Duke of Earl, <laughs> sung out loud for anyone to hear, and no one. <laughs> Artie was the first person I knew to drink a whole 16-ounce bottle of R.C. Cola. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a basis for a friendship. <laughs> um, I'm going to read a, 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 just a couple of family poems. Um, I have a poem about my son in my first chapbook, um, Losses of Moment. The poem is titled In Response to Tao Chen, 
And it's about this father complaining about uh, his son and how he stays out all night and he's, sleeps in all day. Well, my son is in the mid-30s now. That hardly seems an appropriate poem for, for him. Um, but like my relationship with my father, my relationship with my own son is, how shall I say it, touchy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is a poem that speaks to that. Simple chemistry. My son and I talk to each other as if we are standing under a street lamp, and he needs a cigarette lit. So I take a match from my pants and strike it with my thumb, the way the private eyes did in film noir, <laughs> or scratch it across three days worth of whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> There's no trick involved, no sleight of hand. Any rough surface will do. This and fuel and air make heat are downright compulsive, in fact, <coughs> about making heat. To boil water in warm rooms, burn down old forests to rouse creation. Mm. I'm reading some poems now from my new book, as Donnie mentioned before, uh, Traveler. I had hoped that it would be out in time for this reading, but uh, it'll be out in a couple weeks. And Midlist Press is doing this one as well. I have some information about it in the back. I hope you will order it. N not because I'm going to make a lot of money out of it, nor will the library, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, but because just as we need to support small bookstores, we need to support small presses. And um, Midlist does wonderful work. And I'm really pleased to be one of their authors. Um, I have reached the age, as I'm sure many of you have, uh, that um, I've become a, a parent less to my son and more to my mother. And it's an uncomfortable age. Uh, gets me thinking about you know, what it means to be a parent and what happens to parents as time progresses, including me, of course. So this is a poem for my mother as well as for my son, titled Parents. One day, they disappear, shed their tough, scarred skin and crawl away, taking with them their names for us, their odd gestures, their complaints. Years later, we see them sunning themselves on rocks near the beach where they played as children, where they took their own children for weeks in summer. Some hang from tree limbs, seem to levitate. They have peeled layer after layer of scales, even old eyelids. They see us before we see them. We scarcely recognize their muscle and hiss, scarcely have time to greet them before they are no more than their sound of rustling through tall grass, a quick splash nearly noiseless. <clears throat> My father um, taught me about boxing. I always got the worst of it. Except for just one occasion. <laughs> boxing lesson. My father and I would spar in the living room, punch, block, counterpunch, until I split his lip with a right cross, and my mother said, Stop! <laughs> how rare they are, how lovely. The moments a father can celebrate the spill of blood that sweetens his mouth and anoints the young fist of the angry son who loves him just enough to fatten his lip. <laughs> <laughs> 